want you to imagine this for a moment. Close your eyes. It's 2011, you're a kid again, and you spend all your spare time after school browsing Flipnote Hatena on your DSI. All you see are these really amazing hand-drawn characters done by strangers on the internet, and you want to be part of that group too. So you start learning how to draw. It becomes all that you do outside of school, at school, everywhere in between. And your friends and your classmates start to take notice and they tell you that you're really good at this. So you keep doing it. But fast forward a couple years later, you download Instagram on your iPod Touch for the very first time. It's then that you realize that there's a whole other community of artists that share their drawings online for the world to see. And you want to join them, so you get really excited to start posting your own drawings and interacting with other people's work. But it doesn't take you very long to realize that there's artists on there who are much younger than you are, much more talented than you are, and they seem a lot more well-liked than you as well. Then you start doubting your own abilities, and you ask yourself things like, why at 15 is someone else who's three years younger than me doing so much better than me? Am I just inherently less talented than them, and therefore my work is less valuable? And is it even worth continuing to try? Although it's not quite that simple, this is my own story on how perfectionism and comparing my work to others led me to give up on something I used to really love doing. And then eventually, a few things that I used to really love doing. And if this sounds at all familiar to you, then you might also be a perfectionist. So let's talk about perfectionism for a minute. What does that even mean? Well, sometimes we see that phrase being thrown around to mean someone who is striving for the best outcomes. Maybe they're really organized and oftentimes it's associated with being a really high achiever. But that isn't always how it plays out in real life. According to the American Psychological Association, they define perfectionism as the tendency to demand of others or oneself an extremely high or even flawless level of performance in excess of what is actually required by the situation. It is associated with depression, anxiety, eating disorders, and other mental health problems. So basically, it's a flag. And this is the kind of perfectionism that I've been dealing with my whole life. It got especially bad in high school, but after high school ended and all of my art-oriented friends went in separate directions, I no longer had the social motivation to keep drawing. So eventually, I stopped. And this became a habit that actually seeped into all of my other interests, and it left me in a place where I felt like I wasn't really good at anything at all. And this leads me to the irony of it all, because how are we, as any kind of artist or creative, ever going to improve at something that we don't engage with anymore? And if your self-worth becomes so dependent on being talented enough at something, then eventually you will find yourself in this place where you are never going to be good enough, because there's always going to be a flaw, there's always going to be a shortcoming, and there's always going to be something that needs to change before you are good enough. And then it starts to look like an issue of your ability and not your experience that makes you this way. And you might just stop pursuing anything altogether because of an intense fear of failure. Now, I'm not going to try and tell you that I'm some kind of expert on mental health or perfectionism or even that I've defeated the issue myself because I haven't, but I do have a set of tools and tips that I use to help minimize the anxiety that it causes that I found help for me and will hopefully work for you too. The first of these tips is to try and adapt a beginner's mindset even if you're not one anymore. 
It might seem a little bit abstract and it's probably going to take some time to actually get used to, but no matter what your craft is, there's probably something about it that you haven't mastered yet. Try and remember that the work that you're putting in now is necessary for the improvement that you will see later, and oftentimes mistakes that you're going to make are going to be what drive that improvement. But more importantly, try to focus on enjoying the process more than worrying about the results, assuming that the process is actually why you started doing this in the first place. The next tip that I have is to try and focus on surrounding yourself with really realistic examples and models. It can be so tempting to only look up to the pros because they seem like they have it all figured out, but the more that you're actually seeing mistakes and flaws and shortcomings, the more normalized they will become to you and the less shame you'll feel when you see them in your own work. Having a healthy mix of professional advice and realistic examples can also help you to just balance out your own expectations and have a healthier approach to your work. So number three is going to sound a little strange, but just bear with me. I want you to pick out a piece of artwork or music or even a game or a movie that you really like and actively look for flaws in it. This isn't just to be a jerk, but I personally find that if I can find flaws in something that I think is really good, it's a reminder that even things that are imperfect can have a lot of value. And again, it really helps to normalize mistakes and normalize flaws and help you to feel less shame when you see them in your own work. But maybe if you don't have any helpful, constructive criticism to offer, on these imperfections, just keep them to yourself. Number four is a little more obvious, but it's something that I think we could all use a reminder of from time to time, and that is to be super mindful of the comparisons you're making with other people's work. Do not compare your own work to someone who you know has been doing it longer than you or has had better access to resources than you because it will not end well for you. But aside from the obvious examples, there's always going to be people who seem like maybe they shouldn't be further along than you are because of their age, the amount of experience they have, or whatever the reason is. But the truth is that you don't really know how that person got where they got. You don't know what kind of work they put into it, what their approach was, how many resources they had, Maybe they had access to better materials faster. You just never know. So try to focus on your own work instead of making comparisons to others at all. And just remember that your journey is always going to look different from other people's. And just because you're on a different page than someone else doesn't mean that you aren't going to eventually get there. The last but maybe most important tip that I have for you today is to try and catch yourself before you go on a self-criticism spiral. It's a lot easier said than it is done, but if you can start to notice when your thoughts are taking you to that awful place, you can also start to redirect them into a more helpful approach. You can do this by trying to focus more on the small improvements you've made rather than the flaws, or you can also start looking into solutions for the problems that you're facing. But no matter what, try to remember that any solution or improvement that you're trying to make is most likely going to take time and repetition to fully solidify. And nobody becomes good at something overnight. If anybody out there has their own stories to share on how perfectionism has impacted their life or their interests, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below and let me know because I would love to hear it. Hopefully the tips that I've left you with today are helpful on your own journey for whatever you're working towards. And if they were, you can always let me know by leaving a like on the video. You could also subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this. I have a series that I'm working on of trying to learn how to draw characters again after such a long time of not drawing them at all. So if that sounds like something that interests you, I will be leaving the playlist at the end of the video so you can always go check it out. But anyway, thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time.